Continuing with the macro fiscal resilience pillar, obviously natural disasters are now confounded and com you know combined with uh, climate disasters, and many times you get so-called compound disasters, uh, which happened in Nepal a few years ago. There was an earthquake, and before they even recovered, there was massive uh, rainfall extremes from the monsoon, which led to food insecurity problems, recovery problems, and so on. So in this context. Uh, obviously, financing instruments to cover contingent liabilities from natural disasters are important, but also building financial resilience to natural disasters is very important. So these are extensions from the disaster uh, recovery, uh, re disaster resilience strategies, but also they are not so different from adaptation to climate change in that sense. Okay, So here we are looking at a figure again uh, showing a schematic of uh, you know short-term liquidity to long-term financing needs and on this axis from high frequency low intensity climate hazards or natural disasters to low frequency high intensity so low probable high impact high uh, highly probable low impact kind of uh, face base. Uh, International Development uh, Association, Inter-American Development Bank, Japan, Japan International uh, Development Cooperation Agency are mentioned in here. So at this end with high frequency, low intensity and short term liquidity, you have budgetary instruments uh, to ensure financing instruments to cover contingent liabilities from natural disasters. So you have sovereign reserve funds and government reserves, but as you go uh, towards longer time horizons you need contingent budgeting and budge budget reallocation and if you moved, move to mid-level uh, I have a phone call give me a second sorry about sorry it's the Amazon delivery person <laughs> life so we are talking about financing instruments for uh, covering contingent liabilities from natural hazards, which is obviously part of the macrofiscal resilience uh, strategy as a part of the fiscal policy for adaptation, planning and mainstreaming layers, right? So we were here in the medium term with uh, high frequency, low intensity events, but we move up here in terms of intensity and uh, lowering probability. So we're talking about contingent financing with these various agencies we read off here, as well as deferred drawdown option, contingent emergency response components, CERC, and uh, International Development Association uh, crisis response window. So that's your face space here. Post-crisis financing, so when you go into longer term financing needs in this medium probability, medium intensity events, post-crisis financing should include emergency lending, buy or multilateral financing. And if you go to low frequency, high impact intensities at the short term and the long term, we discussed sovereign risk transfer, so insurance including risk pools derivatives, catastrophe bonds, and at longer term you need insurance of public assets because you cannot, uh, you know, private insure, a private construction company may build you a bridge which has to withstand high frequency, low intensity events because these are unacceptable risks as we talked about before. But if it's earthquake that is going to destroy the bridge, then the uh, government has to uh, ensure the public assets. Okay, Optimal strategy to build resilience is a mix between structural protection and financial protection. Okay, So structural protection is not infrastructure structure but this is fiscal tools and uh, fiscal structures. Uh, for example, at the optimum, the marginal, be marginal benefit of adaptation, that is the expected reduction in damages, would be equal to the marginal reduction of the insurance premium plus any residual costs after insurance. These are economics details, which obviously, again, I'm not an expert in this, but I think intuitively you can see what it's trying to say. But of course, you can go and read uh, the report and all these references that are provided. Optimal, the optimal mix of structural and financial protection depends on fiscal space in your uh, net revenues and expenditure, financial market access, so whether it's national or international, uh, what access do you have? 
for the, uh, accessing finance. Uh, the extent of climate change damages, structural adaptation costs, and public investment efficiency. So low efficiency of public investment would further tilt the balance in favor of financial protection, for example. Okay, so read those details if you want. Maybe I should leave this box uh, as an example. Uh, here we will discuss building financial resilience to natural disasters in the Caribbean. So this particular podcast here is uh, short, uh, so maybe I should continue. So let me continue. This is adaptation, learning by doing. As I go along, I adjust the length of the podcast. So box two here, building uh, financial resilience to natural disasters in the Caribbean. The Caribbean is one of the world's most vulnerable regions to climate-related natural disasters, incurring large and recurrent social and economic costs. And their tax base is not very huge either. So here we are looking at distribution of damages per climate-related disasters in the Caribbean, Latin America, Pacific, and rest of the world. So you can see here number of number of natural disasters versus uh, damage. So you are uh, sum as a, a ratio of the uh, GDP. So you can see that the Caribbean in general is high in all these uh, categories. Okay, so I won't go into the details here, but you can see that uh, these are not trivial in terms of uh, providing assistance to this region to make room in the fiscal uh, wherewithal they have to build financial resilience. Caribbean countries have invested in structural and financial resilience, but important gaps remain. Obviously, IMF, World Bank, etc. are playing a role here. So IMF, World Bank climate change policy uh, assessments estimate the investment gaps in structural resilience building, like the difference between investments that have a clear economic benefit and the current investment levels. This is at 2 to 3 percent of GDP a year or a decade or more in the Caribbean. Okay, so here we are looking at uh, CCRF payout to the Caribbean countries. So Caribbean Catastrophic Risk Insurance Facility is what we are talking about and there is other people involved. So data labels use international organization for standardization country codes. So we are looking at average payout uh, for the different uh, regions, average economic cost uh, from EMDAT. Okay, so you know, these are the sub-regions of the Caribbean and you can see that some have uh, fairly large payouts uh, and the uh, diamonds here uh, correspond to... Doo -doo -doo. Let's read this a little bit here. Okay, figure 2.2. Ah, let me leave it there. You can go and figure it out. So the amount saved, however, ta -ta, obviously I didn't uh, prepare this well enough. So let me move on and leave this as uh, homework to you. Okay. Private sector insurance coverage is limited by high costs. As I said, insurers will begin to back off if the so-called high frequency, low intensity events become too frequent. So even though the low intensities may be low, the damages they have to pay out begin to add up then the insurance coverage begins to become too costly if it is offered at all. So premiums will begin to go up. So insurance penetration relative to average climate related damages in terms of GDPs again for the various regions you can see. Uh, these are from various sources so I won't go into this where the data comes from and so on. So insurance penetration is not very high. It's higher in some places but very low in other places. You can see that the some places where it's literally the zero or very less than 10 percent. Okay, so keep these things in mind. Scaling up investment in structural and financial resilience requires concessional financing and would yield significant long-term benefits to the Caribbean. So building financial resilience to natural disasters obviously has 
uh, many important lessons here in terms of what is happening so far and what their uh, vulnerabilities are to climate change disasters. Natural disaster insurance coverage and layering, so insurance coverage as a percentage of GDP. The note here, authorities data and disaster loss function estimates from the Caribbean Catastrophic Risk Insurance Facility. So insurance reinsurance, insurance reinsurance companies are now very good at doing their own modeling and you know simulation modeling, uh, general equilibrium and so on, uh, dynamic uh, stochastic general equilibrium, econometric models, etc. to stay ahead of the game in what risks they are underwriting. This is very critical for them because their livelihood, their financial resilience depends on that, plus the reinsurance companies are going to be always kicking them uh, in the risks they are underwriting. Okay, Not, So looking at that, again different regions, there are saving funds of various levels, uh, CCRIF estimates of uh, disaster loss functions at various levels for the different regions, and state contingent bonds, which are the smallest fraction of these two so that is something one has to keep in mind so again I was a bit brief in that so you go back and read it but we'll come back and look at uh, building capacity adaptation but maybe I should finish that before moving to mainstreaming adaptation in public finance management or PFM that we have talked about building capacity for adaptation capacity development would help vulnerable and low capacity countries to better identify adaptation solutions and the related macro fiscal impacts this is still about macro fiscal resilience pillar uh, against natural disasters the IMF can contribute to global efforts toward capacity building on adaptation uh, there are some reports you can look up. The IMF's adaptation related capacity development covers Climate Macroeconomic Assessment Program CMAP, which is a comprehensive and granular assessment of country specific climate vulnerabilities. So you have to see what the granularity level is. We did that country level or sub national levels. It includes adaptation policies and financing needs to build resilience and typically focuses on climate re related support as well. Uh, on topics such as green public financial management. So let me leave this here and we'll come back and continue. Okay?